Moving on now, it's been 15 months since Russia went to war with Ukraine. While countries across the globe are making efforts in brokering peace between the two warring nations, there is another looming threat here. Yes, uh, at the other end of the spectrum, uh, there is a looming threat. Take a look at this report to find out more. June 28, 1914, a young Serbian patriot shot and killed Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This started a sequence of events which led to World War I. Europe is once again on edge. The Russia-Ukraine war has been raging for over 450 days now. Russia is relentless in its assault and the West continues to pump in weapons to bolster Ukraine. But the biggest fear keeping the world on tenterhooks is the big question. Can the war spill over the borders of Ukraine? There have been near misses. In November 2022, a missile strike on NATO member Poland raised fears of a potentially catastrophic spillover. Earlier this month, these images raised the specter of escalation. Moscow accused Ukraine of orchestrating a plot hatched by the US. Two drones were shot down above the Kremlin on the 3rd of May. Moscow accused Ukraine of trying to kill President Vladimir Putin. It warned of consequences. And now Washington is indirectly blaming Ukrainians for the audacious attack. Earlier this week, Russia thwarted an attack in southwestern Belgorod region. It claimed it killed more than 70 Ukrainian fighters. Ukraine denies any role in the raid. But these images released by Moscow are worrisome. They show American-made military hardware used in a cross-border raid from Ukraine into Russia. Putin once again warned the West. The Biden administration is now probing claims that American arms were used on Russian soil. Berlin is now probing fresh leads that Ukrainians might be responsible for the Nord Stream gas pipeline explosions that took place in September last year. With such provocations, the big question is, will the US trust Kyiv by arming it with F-16 jets? Something Ukraine says is needed desperately to conquer the skies and push back the Russians. After much reluctance, President Joe Biden has agreed to allow allies to train Ukrainian forces on F-16 fighter jets and eventually to provide the aircraft themselves. Bureau report, we on World is One. Now, Pentagon is defending its decision to hold off U.S. support for F-16 fighter jets uh, to Ukraine. Earlier, we spoke to our correspondent in New York, Susan Terani, on uh, there, there seems to be, you know, still some major questions unanswered about the transfer of these jets. Susan Terhani here. What we know as of now is the coalition plans on training roughly 20 Ukrainian pilots. And even that number depends on the level of support countries involved will be able to give this project. We also know that training will take place in Europe. However, unanswered questions like who will ultimately provide Kyiv with F-16s and other aircraft once the training is over remain. And also, what role, if any, will the United States play other than green lighting the transfer of these jets from a third party country? Then there is the challenge of maintenance once these F-16s are in the hands of the Ukrainians. Now, Susan Tarani also explains that there's an appetite for F-16s outside of Ukraine, even as more modern aircrafts are made in greater numbers now. Listen in. As fleets age and F-35s enter the market in great numbers, countries around the globe are lining up to snatch these older F-16 jets. Norway recently sold 32 F-16s to Romania and is waiting for Washington's go-ahead to sell about a dozen more to a company called Draken. Denmark has also sold F-16s. More recently, it's in a deal with Colombia and possibly another one with Argentina as well. So. While these decades-old planes are very expensive, uh, they are still widely popular and don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon.